Last year in October, my friend and I went to the Winchester House in San Jose for a night flashlight tour. Since it was during Halloween season, they were playing a lot of very obviously fake background noises, such as footsteps on the top floor or voices of kids, etc. So my friend, who's a skeptic, and I at first were like, ooh, how spooky. And we really didn't expect to experience anything. But as soon as we got halfway through the tour of the house around the second floor, we started noticing that the temperature in certain areas of rooms would drastically change, even though we didn't notice any fans nearby. We still didn't think much of it at this point, and we're just casually looking with our flashlights into the rooms. For this tour, all the lights were completely off, so everyone just has their flashlights on, pointing wherever they want to see. Now here's where it gets creepy. At some point we're in this room with a lot of glass doors and windows looking into exhibition rooms that are closed off or locked. There's no one inside here, not even the workers. I was looking straight into this one room that had glass windows surrounding it. I was pointing my flashlight straight looking around the room when I turned to the left this one small corner that was surrounded by glass and I'm like one foot away from it when I noticed a dark shadow right behind the glass. The more I stare at it, the more I realize it's like a shadowy face. It was like I was in a trance. I was frozen in place and through the other side of the glass, this old wrinkly face of a woman was staring right back at me. She looked like she was wearing a black cloth over her head. I could see wrinkles on the face and her eyes were just dark and piercing. It was like we were just staring deeply at each other. I can't explain it very well, but it wasn't solid like a regular person. It was dark and almost like a shadow, except a lot more clear. I also only noticed a face, not a body. A few seconds later, I snap out of it and, my, and I scream my friend's name and run towards her. When I told her what happened, we both go back to the place where I saw the face and we look around the room to see if there are any workers there. If there are any projectors around that that could have explained what I saw. But the room was empty, and if you've ever been to that house, you know a lot of these random corners and spaces and certain rooms are barely big enough to fit a human. I was shaking so much after that, and my anxiety was getting pretty bad. I just knew that what I saw, I knew there was no way it was just my mind playing tricks on me. As we continued the tour, I started looking at the pictures of the house and people back then, and the more you look at these pictures, you notice super creepy and demonic looking faces in them. They just completely gave me the creeps. Maybe I was just tripping about these photos, I don't know. After that, I started taking pictures with flash to see if I could catch anything. And my pictures were mostly coming out blurry, but I did catch this one picture that I edited and it literally looked like the shape of a woman in a dress. I also got a live photo that shows an orb moving across the camera. I'll try and attach the pictures below. When I showed my boyfriend the pictures the next day, him being a huge skeptic, he said it was probably just dust or a coincidence, which I can totally agree with. Maybe it was just nothing. But looking back, all these creepy occurrences couldn't have just been a coincidence, especially that face. I remembered all her features so clearly, the wrinkles and the cold eyes. No way that was just a random shadow. I went to an abandoned hospital with three friends. I'd been to this place many times before, but it was the first time I'd been there in the late evening as it was beginning to get dark. After exploring for a little while, we decided to play a few games of hide and seek before we left. I mean, it's a huge abandoned hospital. How can you not want to play hide and seek? As I was most familiar with the building, we decided that I would be the first seeker and the others went to hide. It didn't take long before I found someone, so off we went together to find the other two. As we were walking down the main corridor, we both heard a knocking coming from one of the rooms next to us. It was quite a faint knock, holding the same steady pace throughout. Immediately, we knew someone was in there, so we went in to find them. When we entered, the knocking stopped, again confirming that someone was in here hiding. The room was fairly large, with two smaller storage rooms inside. We searched the whole of the area and found no one. Naturally, we thought either one of the others was messing with us somehow, 
Oh, there was some kind of animal making the noise. As soon as we left the room and went to continue our search down the corridor, the knocking started again. This time it was louder and faster, as if someone was aggressively knocking a door. At this point, we both froze. The noise was unexplainable. Then, from the room directly opposite, one of my friends sprinted out towards the exit, screaming some profanities as they did, and so, of course, we both sprinted with him for the exit of the building. As soon as we got out of the building, we all stopped and stared at each other. I asked my friend why he sprinted out. He said he'd been hearing the faint knocking the whole time whilst he was hiding in the room opposite, but had assumed that someone else was in there. When he realized we hadn't found anyone in there and then heard the knocking starting again, but louder and much faster, he knew something wasn't right. One of my friends was still in the building at this point. We were all slightly panicked and didn't want to go back in, so we called his name, expecting him to somehow be near that room, even though we'd scoped it out. But no, he was at the opposite end of the building, oblivious to what had just happened. Needless to say, that was the first and only game of hide and seek. I went back to the building a few times after this experience and never had any other encounters. The last time I went back, I found that the building had been demolished. A fire had torn through the building and it was then scheduled for demolition. As I approached the heap of rubble, I felt sad. It held such a depressing aura, it was overwhelming. Imagine hundreds of people stood around the rubble of what was once their home. Hundreds of lost souls not knowing where else to go, just staring at the remains of the building. That's what it felt like. I felt like I was sharing their sorrow. After having circled through the rubble, I was about to go back to my car when I noticed the dominant smell of men's aftershave, bearing in mind that this was in the complete open air with no one around. I've read many times that spirits can be identified by strong smells, and this certainly was an unexplainable smell which was so strong, it was like someone had just sprayed me in the face with the aftershave. I still think about this place a lot, Despite the experience with the knocking, I always felt safe and welcome there, and it was a shame to see it destroyed. So I'll start with a little backstory. My grandmother tragically passed away in 29 in a hit and run accident. And in 2020, my grandfather passed away due to COVID. Since their passing, it's only been my mother sister and I in the house, as opposed to having our grandparents with us too. Now the actual story. A few days ago, my mom and my sister decided to go to Target. They spent about three hours there. About 10 minutes after they left, I went downstairs to get a drink and something to eat and went back upstairs. About 30 minutes later, I went downstairs again to return the dirty dishes and saw the dishwasher wide open. Now mind you, I was still home alone at the time. I brushed it off thinking my mom or sister forgot to close it before they left. But looking back at it, the dishwasher wasn't open the first time I went downstairs. Now for the most recent events. These both took place at around 2am. So at around 2am I went downstairs to grab something to drink and to throw my trash away. I threw my trash away in the kitchen trash can. As I went downstairs, I stopped in the kitchen and looked at the living room. I realized that the living room fan was on max speed. The problem is, me and my family don't turn on the fan. The only person that ever turned on that fan was my grandfather, who would spend all night in the living room watching TV. I went there, turned it off, and started to make my way upstairs. As I got close to the front door, I smelled this strong smell. Something like a perfume. The smell was some type of a flower, and later, I realized it was the same exact flower that my grandmother had in her perfume. I ran upstairs and kept playing the game. At around 3am I went to sleep. I then heard loud footsteps close to my door. The floor was creaking very loudly, so it had to have been a larger person doing the walking. My grandparents were both a bit larger, so I thought it was one of them since me, my mother and my sister were all skinny as hell. I don't know what could have been last night, but I'd like to find out. So 
Starting noticing the first week, every morning we would wake up, it was freezing cold. It was so cold we had to all wear sweaters. Also, we were able to see our own breath, thinking it was just because we had nothing in my apartment. After a month, my girlfriend and I adjusting all our new furniture, we would still feel the freezing air in the morning. After two months passed, only I would feel an eerie feeling, especially in our bedroom. I paid no attention to it until my son started getting scared for no reason. He'd be playing with his toys and would just get up and run towards me, panicking and hugging me, not letting go. At that point, I was pretty positive it was some type of bad energy in the apartment. I notified the landlord, but he would just shrug it off and say everything is fine and that there's been nothing negative to happen there. I knew he was just bees to us since we were a young couple, in our mid-twenties. After all this, I had my mother come and say some prayers while she sprayed the whole apartment with holy water. After that, everything felt peaceful and I saw my son was way more comfortable. After five months had passed, my girlfriend and I were just enjoying another night off of work with some mixed drinks and music. Not sure what had happened since we both drank the same amount and I was more of a heavyweight drinker. My girlfriend had told me I just got mad out of nowhere and began to talk so much bad things to her. She said she didn't feel comfortable being around me, so she started getting her stuff and my son's stuff to leave the house, but I wouldn't let her, and was just going off on her. That was around 8pm, and about 10pm, I found myself at my cousin's front doorstep. He told me I rode my bike and was just fine until I told him what was going on. I started calling my girlfriend, explaining to her what was going on, and she was so mad, she couldn't even talk to me. Later that night, I went home and was trying to solve out what was happening, as if I got possessed by something. I was in my living room when I hear a big bang in my bedroom. It was so loud that it made me jump up from the couch. I go and see what's going on, and I see only one of my son's drawer had been shoved out of its place so hard that it made markings on the wall. I felt nothing but goosebumps and a mad feeling since I knew it was something messing with us or me. I started cussing at nothing and saying to go away that it's our time to live here and it's time that's gone. After the next morning, I had explained to my cousin and girlfriend what had happened and they both got so spooked out. Thank God we had money saved up. We got the hell out of there. Now we're happier than ever at our new place. My aunt was living next door to us in the apartment. So basically her walls connected to ours. Very thin walls that we could hear each other. So the second night we'd moved out, my aunt called me sounding terrified, saying there's someone in the apartments. She said she would hear dragging and walking. No talking. My mum is psychic, or magic or something. Paranormal stuff has always interested me, but I hardly ever spend the time to research it, so I have no clue the exact term for her is. So sorry if I use the wrong names for stuff. I 100% believe she can read minds, and being a 15 year old guy, that's just great. Wondering if she knows what I'm thinking about, etc. I firmly believe that she can astral project or something like that while awake. At least once a week, she will be laying or sitting down with her eyes closed and talk to us, but she isn't herself. She's very childlike when she's like this, and her eyes are always closed. She sometimes lifts her arms up, and when she does this, it usually lasts about 15 minutes. Sometimes when she does this, my dad will put her arms down and say, no fly zone, babe, in a joking way, since me and my dad refer to her doing this as flying. With this knowledge, you can better understand some of the stuff she does and maybe identify it. She's a devout Christian, so it's nothing like Wiccan or anything. Here's the most recent and small thing she did. Four days ago, I was wanting to become a morning person, so I watched a video about making yourself get up early each day. I'll link it if you want, it's a great video. And one category was motivation. The guy said it to have some nice warm clothes sitting out for the next day, and I imagined this nice long sleeve green shirt. It was really weird of me to do this, since I don't have a shirt like that and never have. Well today, she said a shirt she ordered for me a few weeks ago finally came in the mail, and it was the exact shirt. 
This is probably just a coincidence, but stuff like this happens all the time. So I pretty much assume it's all her doing. I recently bought a house that's about 70 or 80 years old. It's a small house that originally hand built by the first owner. There's no known bad history here and no bad vibes. But I have a two sets of motion lights that are on different sides of the house that like to periodically go off at the identical time in the middle of the night for no apparent reason. And I can see there is nothing happening outside. Two weeks or so ago, as I'm walking down my driveway, a random vehicle pulls up and the driver, who I've never seen before, tells me my house is haunted by a woman named Mina. He tells me that she likes to set off lights in the middle of the night, but she is friendly and not to be worried. He drives off and I've never seen him again since. Very weird interaction. But he was very friendly, so no harm, no foul. Hopefully explains the lights, I guess. Today I find myself with a rather sick stomach and spend longer than usual in my shower. I'm well aware, as I, was in not, as I wasn't in a rush at all, that my stereo in the room was completely off. I live alone and was homesick all day with the house locked. But I return to the bathroom later and my stereo is switched on. It sits on top of a six foot tall cabinet and has no way to be accidentally turned on. So I guess I'm now hoping these are all from this Mina I'm told about. And nothing more negative. I figured since I just got back from my third trip to Niagara Falls last week and caught something odd on camera, that I would begin with my first Niagara Falls experience. I was living in Cincinnati, Ohio, and on New Year's Eve of 2018, about to be 2019, the guy I'd just started dating asked what I wanted to do to celebrate. It was like 8pm or so, and I told him I wanted to see a waterfall because I'd never seen one before. So me, being impulsive and spontaneous, said, Hey, Niagara Falls is only 7 hours away by car, and the park's open 24-7. Let's go. So we did. We arrived at Niagara Falls between 3 and 4am. It was now January 1st, the middle of winter, so it was like 15 degrees, windy, frozen snow still on the ground, pitch black outside. We just parked to the first parking spot we could find in town and followed the sound of the waterfall. To our surprise, we were literally the only two people in the entire state park. Like yeah, it was the middle of the night and the middle of winter, but still, I thought surely there would be a few other people there, even just local teenagers. But no, just us. I didn't even see any security or cop cars the whole time I was there. It was creepy, but also so cool. Only about half the lamps were on along the paths and trails. They just alternated, one off, the next one on, the next one off, etc. I suppose to conserve power. I was also surprised that access to the river was just kind of wide open. No gates or anything unless you're actually at the designated overlook part of the falls. But head back along the river a few yards, so you're technically behind the falls, and there's no gate at all along that ru rushing river. I thought with it being a global suicide hotspot, they would either have more security, or at least put up a gate along the river, making it less easy to just walk or slip on ice and glide right into it. But nonetheless, we were walking on the path along the river, away from the falls, where we were surrounded by darkness and trees, with the river on our right. We were laughing and having a great time, for anyone who's familiar with Niagara Falls, we were walking to Three Sisters Island and we were about halfway there on this barely lit path. The guy I was with had to pee, so we stayed back a little ways, peeing in the bushes. I was alone maybe 50 feet on the, ahead on the path, under one of the lamps that was on. Then all of a sudden, I can't explain it, but I felt this sensation of swooshing taking over my body. And I was suddenly overcome with the most extreme sense of desperation and hysteria and adrenaline and being terrified, with this urge to just run and jump into the Niagara River, River next to me. I felt like I was having a mental breakdown and losing my mind. So depressed and suicidal and so, so desperate for it to end, I was thinking of all the people I'd loved. But not my loved ones, just anonymous loved ones, if that makes sense. And I felt so fucking sorry that I was leaving them behind. 
But the fear, adrenaline, desperation, and hysteria is what I felt the most. It's like my mind was on fire with the hysteria and depression, and it terrified me. And the desperation to make it end is what was triggering the adrenaline and urge to jump into the water. The worst mental and emotional pain you can imagine. Ugh, I just wish I could describe this better for you guys. But the word that comes to mind aside from hysterical is anguish. I felt the anguish. And that, combined with the hysteria and suicidal feelings and intense desperation, made my mind feel red hot. Like I had to jump into the river. That I was running from something terrifying in my own mind. I knew the only way out was to end it all. Like, just imagine running into something that is so petrifying and evil that you just become hysterical from the fear and become desperate to kill yourself just to get away from it. That's what I felt. It felt so intense that even after it ended, it still felt terrifying. Even though in reality, it only lasted about five or 10 seconds from the time the swoosh of emotions overtook me to when they finally ended. Then instead of my mind feeling red hot, my whole body suddenly felt ice cold, but still felt so much fear. After it ended, I was just frozen with fear till the light from the lamp above me made this big pop sound and suddenly went out. But when it did, it was like the bulb went out because the two lights next to it didn't turn on. As I said, the lights alternated, so if one went out, the next two to it that had been off would normally turn on, but that didn't happen. When the lights burst, I suddenly felt like I just had to run away. So I ran to the guy I was with and tried to explain what happened. I told him it felt like I was feeling the exact same emotions as fear as someone who had committed suicide there had felt the moment they did it. That's the only thing I could think of. I was feeling what someone else felt right before they jumped into the river to go over the falls and die. I have my fair share of paranormal spirit encounters, all of which I try to debunk first and foremost, but that was the first and only ghost encounter I've ever had. Though instead of seeing the ghost, I simply felt the ghost. It definitely freaked me out, to say the least. Then around 6am, we drove back home. Eventually, I went with my mom to Niagara Falls the next year and nothing would wild happened, as it was during the day. But then this weekend, I drove up to Niagara Falls for a third time, with my boyfriend, the same guy I was dating during the first trip, and his 12 year old son. We got there during the day and stayed until nightfall so we could see the falls lit up before heading home. Because of my ghost encounter from our first trip, I tried to take a bunch of photos that night, with and without flash, especially in the area where the encounter happened. I always took more than one picture so I could compare it to others. Upon reviewing the pictures after I got home, I saw this strange one that had flying orbs, as I call them, floating down to the ground. The other photos I took of the same spot had no such orbs and there were no lights in the background that could have caused this. And keep in mind, I am not an orb person. I just did this out of curiosity, hoping to see an apparition or something. To top it off, I also reviewed the pics I took earlier in the day with my boyfriend and his son. And on four or five separate pictures, there appears to be a blue orb floating down the river further and further in each picture. Definitely strange, but like I said, I'm not an old person. I've never believed in them really, and they could have been caused by the reflection of the water. The daytime orbs were totally different from the nighttime orbs. The daytime orbs were just blue balls of light that could easily be from a flare. But the nighttime orbs were mostly white and had tails between them that they made it look they had almost been twirling in sync with one another. I was raised Baptist and was never allowed to have a Ouija board growing up. So after becoming atheist, I decided to buy one just for the fun of it. Still believing that any movement would be a result of the idiomotor effect. I played around with it, not much happened. So I just put it back in the box and shoved the box under my and my boyfriend's bed. Two or three nights later, I woke up to what sounded like a violent scratching or clawing noise and what felt like the bed shaking. As you know, when you wake up because you think you heard something, you'll hold your breath so you can hear better in the silence. Well, that's what I did. I held my breath, terrified. And it was strange because it was almost waiting for me to let my guard down. 
because as soon as I exhaled and thought, whew, it was just a dream, the scratching and clawing picked up again. It was so forceful, it was shaking the freaking bed with each scratch. So I obviously freaked the hell out and wake up my boyfriend, who was asleep next to me, while the scratching paused again. As soon as I shook him awake, he could tell I was terrified just by the look of my face. He started to ask what's wrong, and I just shushed him and whispered, Shh, listen, just tell me if you hear it too. And we're both sitting there in silence, and once again, it was as if it was just waiting for our guard to lower, because as soon as my boyfriend said, Hear what? I don't hear... The scratching suddenly picked up ten times harder, faster, and louder than it had been before. My boyfriend was braver than I was. He immediately hopped out of bed and turned on the light while yelling, What the fuck was that? And as soon as the light was on, it stopped. I immediately looked for a rational cause. I, don't, I didn't have any animals at the time, no kids, no TV or radio on. We lived in a brick house, so nothing could get in the walls by ourselves in the suburbs, so no weird wild animals or anything. There was no explanation. My boyfriend looked under the bed, he looked all around the house, he even looked around outside of the house just to try to find some explanation, but there was nothing. So my boyfriend and I eventually get back into bed. We snuggled up close and then he reached over to turn the light off. We laid there, listening for any hint of movement. And of course, as soon as my boyfriend relaxes and says, I think it's gone now, the scratching and clawing started picking up even more violently than before. At that point, we turned every light in the house on and went and slept in the living room. The next experience, experience occurred about a month after the first experience. My boyfriend was such a heavy smoker, he would literally wake up every few hours throughout the night to go outside on the back patio and smoke a cig. I'm such a light sleeper, it would often wake me up when he went out to smoke, and then wake up again when he came in from smoking and crawl back into bed. It was probably around 2am or so, and I heard my boyfriend get up out of bed. So I'm trying to fall back asleep and I hear him put his shoes on. I hear him open and close the bedroom door. I hear his footsteps walking down the hallway. I hear him open and shut the hallway door, open and shut the back door, and I hear the back screen door open and shut too. All totally normal. I don't know how much time had passed, probably not that long because I never fall back asleep all the way, but maybe 30 minutes later I heard the screen door open and shut again, along with the back door. I heard the door at the end of the hallway open and shut. I heard his footsteps walking down the hallway toward the bedroom, a bit heavier this time as if he was stomping for some reason. Then I heard our bedroom door open and shut. Normally at this point I would be hearing my boyfriend crawl into the side of the bed as he slept right next to the door while I slept on the other side by the wall with my back to the door. But instead, I hear him still stomping, walk around the bed and walk up my side all the way up to the desk and stop right there, standing in f right in front of my face. My eyes were still shut and I was still laying there on my side, facing where he was standing, but still trying to fall back asleep. I figured maybe he was putting his phone on charge as the outlet is by my pillow. But I don't hear him messing with any phone charger. I don't hear anything. I suddenly felt like there was somebody just staring at me, watching me. That's when the terrifying thought crossed my mind. Why is he just standing there, in front of my face, doing nothing, except watching me sleep? And I just got this sinking feeling in my stomach. Then I hear a voice whisper my name and telling me to wake up. It almost sounded like my boyfriend, but the voice was deep and raspy and almost distorted. I open my eyes and despite hearing him walk in and open and close doors and walk around to my side of the bed and stand there, there's no one fucking there. But it gets creepier. I freak out, jumping out of bed and running down the hall to find my boyfriend. And once I turn the corner to go running through the living area where the exit to the back patio is, I literally run into, like actually physically collide with my boyfriend. Turns out, he was in the process of running inside to find me, while I was in the process of running outside to find him. Before I can even gather my thoughts to turn them into words, he goes, where were you? Are you okay? Did you hear it? I don't know what just happened. I came out to smoke and I guess I must have fallen asleep in the hammock or something, because the next thing I know, I heard the patio door open and the screen door, 
and it half woke me, so I was just half asleep. But I heard you walk up and I felt you sit down on the hammock with me and put your hand on my leg. Then I heard you say my name and then you yelled at me to wake up. And it sounded like you, but I knew it wasn't your voice. Then when I opened my eyes, there was no one there. And I looked around and I didn't see you, so I panicked. So long story short, we both had the same unique experience at the same time in different areas of the house. Both of us thinking it was the other person, only for us to realize, also at the exact same time, no one was there at all. Which begs the question, who did both of us hear walking through the halls, patio and bedroom, if it wasn't either of us? All right, heads up. This is by far my favorite, and in my opinion, the most convincing experience. It's more akin to a miracle. It occurred probably five months after experience two above. Since that experience, I'd actually made a lot of progress on the Ouija board, and you could say I befriended the spirit in the house, Grio. It's a long story, but basically I told her out loud, if you want to stay in this house, you can make all the noise you want in the daytime, but not at night because it scares the shit out of me. Take it or leave it. And it worked. I worked hard to communicate over time and build a rapport of sorts with it. But those are stories for another day. The point is the spirit was no longer terrifying us and became more of a welcomed, although prankster presence. But keep in mind, in my head, I still partially believed I was just going insane and that none of this was real. Imagination, mental illness, idiomotor effect, gas leak, brain tumor, something rational. The atheism was strong in me. Around this time, my boyfriend, who had been in long-term recovery from heroin addiction, ended up relapsing. I knew it, as I was in long-term recovery myself, and I knew all the signs, but he wouldn't admit it. I knew the only way he would admit it and go back to rehab is if I found evidence and confronted him with it. When he left for work one night, I knew it was a chance to find evidence. He would never take syringes to work with him, so I knew they had to be in the house somewhere. I searched for several hours and I was frantic, but after finding nothing, I was in tears, sobbing, desperate. So I had an idea. In absolute desperation, still in tears, energy still very high, good for spirits, I pulled out the Ouija board. I thought, this is my last shot. Here goes nothing while also at the same time kind of viewing it as a test to see if my paranormal experiences were legit, or if I was somehow making them up in my own head. Once I contacted that prankster spirit, I asked if he had seen, or would know, the location of something my boyfriend had hid recently somewhere in the house, like perhaps a baggie or syringes. When the planchet again went to yes, I just broke down and said straight up, please, I need help. I need to know where he hid those items so I can save his life. I swear to God, if you help me find those items, I will never ask you to find anything for me or do another favor for me ever again. Please, where should I look? And I'll admit, I felt like a crazy person. But to my surprise, it started to spell out a list of words. It spelled out basket, basement, trouser, laundry, fleece, sock, pocket. Then the energy died out. Again, that atheistic doubt in the back of my mind, thinking of the idiomotor effect, thought, that's a strange list for my subconscious to spell out. I don't even use the word trouser and we don't own anything fleece. To skip the boring parts, I searched for 90 minutes straight and was about to give up. But then while in the laundry room of my basement, I saw a basket underneath the rocking chair that I hadn't noticed before. It was a box of pants, or you might say trousers, all belonged to my boyfriend. I dug through and got to the last pair of trousers in that basket under the chair in the laundry room of the basement. It was a pair of jeans. And I shit you not, in the pocket, I pulled out a fleece motherfucking sock that I had never seen before. And wrapped up inside that sock, I found two syringes and several empty gel capsules. What dope comes in around here? Once I saw that, a shiver went down my spine because I realized everything was actually real. The truth of spirits in the afterlife had hit me in the face like a bunch of bricks. I wasn't just crazy after all that. That was my proof that spirits were real because I never could have known that. Not a single world was incorrect from the Ouija board. Like I suddenly got the most terrified feeling ever. Just knowing that the spirit I talked to was real and was now certainly watching me make the discovery. 
watching me standing there frozen in fear and awe and realization as I looked around the basement. I thanked it. And yes, that discovery did propel my boyfriend and eventually fiance into treatment. But unfortunately, in late 2017, my fiance relapsed one more time and passed away. But thanks to that spirit, I got to spend a couple more sober years with them. Otherwise, I would have lost them before then.